Greetings to all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, today is Saturday, November the 3rd, and I am driving around in my car, so I just uh, thought I'd probably, you know, since I don't always have time these days, I figured it might be a good way of doing a short video. And today I wanted to do a little video on the topic of hell. Okay, is hell a place of punishment? Or is hell a place that was never originally made for man, but man condemned himself to hell? Because the common understanding that people have, this is something which I've heard, and I watched this video from a channel called Curious Life that does some good work on uh, flat earth, etc. And he was just, uh, you know, going on about, which is a lot of people say, you know, how can you believe in a God that, you know, punishes people in hell and, you know, puts them through torment, okay? And this is a good question, but it also has a good answer. And the answer is that hell is not a place of punishment. Hell is a place of death, okay? That when people die, when man condemned himself to death, okay? Death entered into the world, the Bible tells us, through Adam, our first father. And therefore, there had to be some consequence that is associated with death. So what is death? And you know, there are videos, I will put a link to them in the description that I have done on the topic of death. I believe I have done three videos that explains to you the biblical definition of death. So the question then becomes, is hell the place that God sends people to punish them and to torment them forever and ever and ever and ever and ever? Okay, is this what the Bible teaches? And the answer is no, no. You see, when death came, something had to happen. Death itself is a state of torment, okay? It is a state of everlasting torment because a soul that is a person, which is a consciousness, it never once created, and God's the only one that can create a conscience or a consciousness, sorry, consciousness, a soul. And as we read in the Bible in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, that God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul, which is a conscious being. This consciousness originates with God. And once it has been created, it can never be destroyed. It is a form of intelligent energy. That's what a soul is. And once created, it can never be destroyed. There's even an axiom in science, you know, that uh, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And that is the truth. Energy can be created. And the creator of that is God. Okay. And therefore, he is all energy, intelligence. He is all, I'm just getting a little bit sidetracked here, so let me get back to the topic of death. So when man chose, God gave man an option. He put him in, a, in, a, in the Garden of Eden, and he gave him a command, okay, that, you know, your diet or your food is going to be all the fruits of the tree of the garden. You can eat whatever you want, but do not eat the fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, or else you will die, okay? And so that warning, which was a warning, a command and a warning, it came with a consequence, okay? It is like if you tell somebody that uh, if you go down this windy road at 80 miles an hour, you are going to go off the cliff and you're going to die. Okay, that is not a punishment if that person actually ends up dead. That is a warning that was given to the person and it came with a consequence. And that is exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden, that whatever God told man, it came with a, con it came with a consequence. The warning that was given to him is that if you do eat this fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, okay? And man had to eat that fruit, which I've done many videos on, and why that had to happen, why the things happened the way they happened. You know, they are explained. The Bible does explain them. Because that has everything to do with what we call a conscience. A conscience cannot be inputted into any conscious being without the knowledge of good and evil. So we needed that. 
So it had to happen, but there had to be a certain methodology that God would employ in giving, in bringing man the knowledge of evil. God himself is not evil, so he couldn't do that, but he had these creatures, the devil, created already and in existence before man was placed in the garden. Okay, So God essentially told man that if you follow the devil, if you follow Satan, who is who has the power of death, as the Bible tells us, then you are going to die. Okay? And what does death mean? Death does not mean non-existence. It means a state of torment. Okay, It is like being in a torture cham chamber forever, for that is what death, the spirit of death does. It grabs a hold. People live in a state of waking death. Okay, they do. Even while they are alive, they live there in a state of death because you know they are tormented in their minds. They're tormented in their inner being. Okay, their thoughts of uh, whatever their condition, their love life, their economic condition, their uh, relationship situations. You know, they are constantly in torment and in fear. And you know, is he going to leave me? Or you know, what will happen if I lose my job? You know, how am I going to make my mortgage payments? These are just simple forms of tormented, a state of torment. Okay? Now multiply that by a million or a billion. That is what death is. Okay? Death is not non-existence. Death is a state of torment. So God warned man that if you choose to eat this fruit of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, then essentially what you're going to be doing is you are going to be handing yourself over to this evil lord, overlord, whose name is Satan, who is death and he is going to grab a hold of your consciousness and he is going to constantly torment you. Your mind is going to be, your existence is going to be a state of burning torment. And that my friends is literally what hell is. Now hell is a physical place too that exists within the heart of our earth. It is, okay? So what he, what God told them was that will happen is that he is going to take you and when your body dies, he's going to grab the soul of yours and he's going to take it down to hell. And that is where you will exist in a state of torment forever. That's what's going to happen. So hell and death were not a punishment. They were a consequence of man's own actions. Rather than teaching, which the church, the Catholic church in particular, which is nowhere near anything that can be called Christian, they are very good at, at, at you know, at, in this psychological operation where they subtly teach people that this is what God is doing. He's punishing you. You're going to go to punishment. You're going to go into hell. And you know, this is going to be your punishment. No, man had condemned himself to death and hell by his own choice. Jesus Christ came to free you from hell. He didn't come to punish you into hell. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. He came to save you from hell. God came down to earth in the form of a man to save you from hell, not to send you to hell. That is a lie from the pit of hell that God punishes people by sending them to hell. Jesus said, I have the keys of death and hell. He came and took them from the devil and he opened the gates of hell. And whosoever believes in him is liberated from it. So this teaching that hell is a place of punishment is a lie from the pit of hell. Don't you ever believe that your God does not condemn people to death. Your God and my God who created us, who gave us the breath of life, who made us a living soul, who taught us what good and evil means so that we could be creatures of conscience and not a robot. He came to free us from death. He died himself so that we might live. Okay? That is the real message in the Bible. So hell, does it exist? Absolutely. Is it a place of punishment? No. At least not for man. It is not a place of punishment. It is a place of uh, it is a place which was originally created for the devil, as the Bible tells us, that uh, hell is a place created for the devil and for his angels. And that's, my friends, is the truth, okay? So this, this psyop, this lie, that hell is a place of punishment, it doesn't come from the Bible. So open your Bible, start studying, start learning, start educating yourselves, all right?
that uh, hell is not a place of punishment. It is a place which was originally designed as a place of punishment for the devil and for his angels. And by the way, when the Bible uses the word angels in regards to Satan, okay, that doesn't mean that these are the angels that God created. No, it just means evil spirits. Angels, the word angel means a messenger, okay, emissary. That's what it means. So the devil himself has messengers and emissaries. So in regards to this teaching that, you know, these are all fallen angels that God had created, no. These evil spirits of today are not fallen angels. These are have a different origin, which I've been discussing in my Bible history series, and I would welcome you to study those. But anyhow, I just want to finish this here once more time, that hell is not where God says it is not. He says it, 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 it God, it is not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of the truth through knowledge of salvation through Jesus Christ. So man himself sent himself, sentenced himself to hell. God sent his only begotten son into the world so that he could free us from it. That is the reality. Hell exists, yes for sure. Are there people in it? Yes for sure. God has made a way out of it for us. He is not the one that punishes people in hell. It is Satan and God is the one that now, Jesus, God in the flesh, he has the power over death he has the power over all the power of the Satan and of the devil. And therefore, he it is alone that can save you from hell. Are you going to go to hell when you die? Absolutely. Because everybody does. Man himself chose death and that's where death leads us. But you don't have to. You can believe in Jesus Christ. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, which means he conquered death, which means he abolished hell he opened the doors of hell so we don't have to be locked up in it forever and ever then you will be saved but if you don't believe it then that's where you're headed thank you for listening this is paul sandu